Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince, and I'm an Army veteran. And today I want to talk to you about the veteran service organization known as the VSOs and patient advocates. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You can find more content for Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. If you're a veteran and would love to share your story or resource for veterans and non-veteran who would love to share your resources, please con tag me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. And now that we've gotten all the business aspect out of the way, let's get into our topic. So, the, so today I'm going over who the VSOs and patient advocates are because many veterans are being denied benefits. Many veterans have tons of questions and they keep asking peers and organizations that may not have the right answers and many organizations aren't recognized and that's why most veterans are being denied their claims. So, I'm going to load up and show you on my screen share who the VSO is so that you can have a clear understanding of who they are because this is the situation that most veterans are faced with as far as when they want to basically get their um benefits from the VA and they're going to non-congressional recognized organizations to, to receive help and they're running into a brick wall and they can't figure out why. So I want to introduce you to the veteran service organizations known as the VSOs, because these are the organizations right here that can help you. And they are great organizations because they're congressional recognized organization. How I know about this organization, because at one time I wanted to start an organization with my wife called Vet the Vet. And what happened was I was turned down from actually starting a company for veterans because I was offering to help veterans, but for monetary compensation. And because the VSO, the veteran service organizations that are out there, such as DAV, um, and American Legion, amongst other veteran recognized organizations, because they're out there and they're offering this service for free, I was told that I couldn't start this organization and I was denied the opportunity to use the name VET, spelled V-E-T. That's why my business name is spelled V-3-T, because when I went to get a congressional recognized organization um, letter of approval for the name, to use the word VET or veteran for my business, I wasn't able to do so because they said that at the time for the service that I wanted to offer, I was going to use the name Vet. And I didn't want to change my name because I liked the word, I liked the name Vet Talk. So I had to figure out another way to do that. And I was able to figure out how to do um, what I did as far as changing the, um, the E to a three because I talked to a patient advocate who helped me to basically keep the name without keeping the name. So that's why I want to talk to you about who these people are so that you have a clear understanding of who they are. So right here, you can see um, they have the frequent asked questions. And that question um, is about the veteran service organization. So they give you a clear description right here. You can read it for yourself. But for those who may have a hard time reading for themselves, I'm going to read it. And it says veteran service organizations. VSOs offer a range of service for veterans, service members, dependents, and survivors. Some VSOs may provide programming for veterans in their communities, such as job fairs. Others may organize events to raise money for a subset of veterans, such as housing for vet homeless veterans. Some VSOs train individuals to meet federal regulation regulatory requirements to become accredited representatives who can represent claimants before the Department of Veteran Affairs Regional Office and his Board of Veteran Appeals. This report answers frequently asked questions to clarify how VSOs are funded, administrated, and connected to the federal government. So right there in that line, it said they represent claimants before the Department of Veteran Affairs. So this is where a lot of veterans are running into problems that, um, as far as when they go apply for their benefits. Because if the person that's helping you, such as some of those companies out there um, where you may have some special lawyer that you paid and you didn't go look on 
the list at va.gov to verify and ensure that they're recognized by the VSO organizations, then that's where you may be running into your issues at because you're giving the VA information that didn't come in through these people right here, which are the VSO or VSOs. So that's where a lot of y'all are facing issues at. At one time, veterans kind of got away with that. But because the VA has seen so many different claims come across their desk, and I don't know because I'm not an insider, but because of what I've been seeing and reading and learning a lot about, because I have a wife that's going through the process, I know of a different people that are going through the process. When I started reading, I started coming across things and started hearing things about them cutting funding and all these different things. And what I'm finding out, even from my own situation of trying to start an organization, they, uh, I was told that they put a cease and assist order out there stating that if these organizations aren't represented, um, by uh, they didn't get the congressional letter of approval for them to be in business, then that's why when they see information coming from these organizations, how they know is because, again, I'm pretty sure at some point a VSO um, representative have to sign off on something. I don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming that they do. And when they see that those organization names aren't coming across their desk or those personnel representatives who they have in place aren't, you know, um, their name not coming across the desk, that can be the very reason why you're being denied. And I want to make sure that, you know, you get what you're entitled to. And I want to make sure that you understand that because right here it shows and it says that what are veteran service organizations? Veteran service organizations, VSOs are organizations that aid and service veterans, service members, dependents, and survivors. So if you are a veteran, if you're a service men member or dependent or survivor of a veteran or a military person that died, this is who they're there to help. And it says VA, uh, VSOs may fall into one or more category of the following categories. So they have to be congressional chartered organizations, organizations recognized by the VA, organizations recognized by VA to prepare, prepare, present, and prosecute claims. National organizations, state, country, tribal, government organization, regional or local organization, nonprofit organizations. So they have a code right here that you can read um, about who they are. This right here gives you a clear description and picture of who they are. So, again, if you're receiving help from a company that's not recognized by the VA, this is why you're running into those situations. And I wanted to make sure that you understand that so that when you are getting denied, you understand why you're getting denied because you may not be represented by the right person. And I tried to explain this in my um in two other videos that I did. And it seemed like people didn't look at it because they didn't understand what I was really trying to explain to them. But those two videos um are listed as VA um benefits claim part one and part two, I went through and I gave you a clear understanding of how to go about making sure that you do that. And I just wanted to give you this information because I know a lot of you are out there asking these questions. Um, and I want to make sure that you're getting the benefits and entitlements that you deserve, but I don't want you to get shortchanged because you're using the wrong sources to try to get this. And if you go to the va.gov website, you can actually um find you know those people in your actual area, your location. You can go on va.gov and discover who these people are so that you're not stuck in a situation. So now my second group of people that I want to introduce you to is the patient's advocate. I want to introduce you to the patient's advocate because again, these are some people that can help you out with so much. Like I said earlier, when I was um, trying to figure out how to use the name VET, I talked to a patient advocate that was helping me out with some of my situations that I had going on. Another thing that the patient advocate explained to me was, because um, I had, I think I was trying to get a form, a release form, medical form from the VA, and I kept calling, couldn't, fi um, couldn't find out who had my paperwork. And as most of y'all may not know, the vet, um, the VA has basically uh, relieved a lot of people. So a lot of people who might have had hands on your paper aren't at the VA no more. So your paperwork kind of get passed through here and there. And 
the patient advocate is basically the people that you will go to who advocate on your behalf, stand in the middle between you and the rest of the department of the VA. And another thing I want to help you understand is each group or organization within the VA are separate. So they don't always talk. And that's why the patient advocate will be beneficial to you because you can talk to them and they can make sure that both groups or parties involved with your situation know what's going on. Because what I was explain what they explained to me was there are a lot of times where veterans may send paperwork up there, a nurse or somebody may grab that paperwork and they may not really read it or look at it and they just put it on somebody's desk. And a lot of times your information may be sitting there. So when you deal with the patient advocate, they're the ones that basically push the um, envelope and ensure that you get what you need, even if you have questions and concerns and different things. So I'm going to read to you who they are and I'm going to show you um, where to go to find them, um, especially for those who are here in Texas. I'm going to show you um, the North Texas um, organization, but anybody through this link that I'm going to put in the description can go and find the patient advocate in their state. So who are the patient advocate um, advocates? It says they are available at every v, um, at every medical center. Patient advocates are highly trained professionals who can help resolve your concerns about any aspect of your healthcare experience, particularly those concerns that cannot be resolved at the point of care. Patient advocates listen to any questions, problems, or special needs you have and refer your concerns to the appropriate medical center staff for resolutions. And right here, they show you where you can find the patient advocates at. And I'm going to let you, and then right here, you can see on this site, on the VA.gov website, this right here is just a list of different, you know, departments, administrations, and medical centers for all of the states in the United States. And you know, some of those states overseas like Hawaii, um, this this is right here is where you can click on to find your organization. You can find your organization on this list for your patient advocate. And I'm about to click out this video and I'm going to go to the North Texas website so that those who are in Texas where I'm at can understand once you click on the um organization that's in our state, it's going to take you to this page right here. Okay, so it didn't come up. Just one second. I'm going to go over. I'm going to do it again. And this is it right here. This is the patient advocate site right here in North Texas. And as you can see, they give you clear and specific information that you need to know about who you need to speak to, what you need to ask, what you need to do, who you need to find. And this is the list right here of patient advocates here in the Dallas area, because that's where I'm at. And these are all of the advocates right here. They got their phone numbers and their name. And anytime you find yourself in any situation where you need some help, um, you can go here. And then they got questions you can ask. If I have a complaint, should I talk to a patient advocate first? And they said the best and fast way to resolve a complaint concern or issue is directly with the person involved. If that does not work, talk with that person's supervisor or section chief. If the issue remains and you feel that, I mean, remains or you do not feel your complaint has been properly addressed, contact a patient advocate. So this right here is where you need to go. And again, this right here is for each and every state. So there's no need for you to be out there trying to um figure out how you're going to do this stuff alone. There's no need for you to um keep going through all these different organizations who may not be VSO certified or congressional recognized, as they say um earlier in the description that I showed you all this information from. Um, so I'm just really want to make sure that you get the proper care because I'm tired of hearing veterans saying, hey, man, I, I went there and I filed my claim and I got denied and they don't know why they're denied. They're like, I sent in all the evidence and this, that, and the third. Well, a lot of times 
it can be due to the fact that you didn't go to the right people to get the help from in the first place. The other thing could be um, you may be putting things on there that you shouldn't put on there. Because one of the other things that I see a lot and I think is crazy is why would you go online and ask other veterans in the so-called veteran group for help for things that you should know? I'm going to be honest to you. There is no science or no cheat sheet to beating or as they uh, be, oh, I won't say beating, but fighting for your case. There's, there's no cheat sheet. The only thing you can do is go in there and be truthful and honest about your situation. And if you don't win um, your disability um, case, just being honest, then the best thing you can do is don't do it. Don't do it. Because the one thing I learned about a lie is you can tell a lie so much that you may end up forget forgetting it or you may not remember it. And then you find yourself in a situation down the road to where, you know, you become the boy that cry wolf. You cry wolf so much into now people don't even believe you. So don't set yourself up for failure by doing that. If you have things that are legitimate, go to the VA and get help for that. You know what I'm saying? Seek outside sources and doctors for that. I gave y'all a video from Dr. Janine Ridgeway. She's a great person to link up with if you have medical concerns. Um, there are other organizations out there, people out there that can help you, even if you don't want to use her. I'm, I'm okay with that. It wasn't about trying to sell something to you. It was just about trying to get you the help that you need. But I think a lot of y'all veterans need to slow down and ensure that the people that you're using are authorized to help y'all because you can't say what he say or she say or they say. That's not going to work for your situation, especially where the VA is cracking down on a lot of things. And there are a lot of people from a lot of reports that I've been getting, getting busted, um, reduced, have to pay restitution, being incarcerated because they lied. They went to the wrong people to get help. And I don't want that to be you. So that's why I did this video, because I wanted you to understand and know who your VSO or, um, organizations are and who your patient advocates are. So as always, you know, this has been another episode of Vet Talk with your boy, Brother Vince. As I always say, Vet Talk out.